Hey, what's up, guys? The easiest deck in Clash Royale just evolved to become even better. Whenever opponents see Little Prince, he'll be trying to finish it off as fast as possible with poisons and fireballs, giving this deck a plus one elixir advantage and the ability to go for an elixir collector with no spells from your opponent to damage it down, which builds an even bigger advantage. Because when you're up, you hit your opponents up with the Rail Recruits Evolution. And whichever recruit side they dedicate more elixir defending, you rush in the opposite lane. And the Goblin Giant Mini Packer Rage will inflict some serious pain. It's practically impossible to defend this combo when you're down Elixir. And all the distractions get melted by a raged up Goblin Giant and Arrows, allowing the Mini Packer to dial into towers and damage everything down to zero. If you're bad at the game, this deck will be your hero. Let's charge up the leaderboard to a higher rank than we deserve and assert dominance. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you never miss out on any of the daily videos. Lots of love to everyone that's using Critic Code Tag to make all the high for videos possible. Hey, what's up, Emilio? You're gonna have a Firecracker Evolution in the banner, Knockout MX. Well, we're ready to knock you out with our recruits in the back first play. Love Cycle to the Evolution, and we're already racing in the right direction. So the guy's gonna have a little Prince. Obviously, if we're playing against that card, he's gonna probably be predisposed to clicking the ability to finish off our recruits, which is totally fine and acceptable here. I wanna go for a Rage so we can finish off the little Prince, maybe, possibly. Oh, no, he got the ability down. He is not having any of that today. Let's go for our little prince. Make sure the little prince is stagnant. Watch his little prince walk up and die. Hopefully. I don't know why I was singing out there, but I'm singing a good song. Since we are going to be able to go for an elixir collector and then protect it if he's going to have a miner and he's not going to have poison. So this will be very good. I bet you goes miner and we can go goblins on it. Please go for the miner. Nice. The goblins should be able to catch that and snag a positive one trade and also keep our elixir collector alive so we can have a bountiful presence of elixir. Also... I want to go recruits when our opponent's down a little bit, and then we want to apply pressure. So the strategy here is I'm going to go recruits a little bit further up so he's not able to poison them all of them at once and hit the elixir collector like you would typically want to. And then I think we can go goblin giant on the right-hand side and go mini Pekka. I should have split three and three, but I was kind of scared of him going in for a poison, so that's why I decided to do that. All right. So if the recruits can just kill the bomb tower, then I'm a happy player. Yes, sir. That's what we needed. No little prince. Goblin Giant's coming through. How are you expecting to defend this? What is the strategy here, man? I'm hyped to find out if he has any. I could arrows. I could also overcommit, but I'm just going to let that thing go, and it's not going to take my tower. Meanwhile, the mini Pekka is devouring everything that he holds dear in life. All right, so we can go in for more elixir collectors in the back. The guy might also have rage quit. I don't know if he's playing the game anymore. Sometimes when you take a tower, it's hard to tell. Yeah, no, he's still going to play. But since he's running Minor Poison, all I have to do is defend against the Miners, and he's not able to take our tower. I'm just going to keep up the Recruits' pressure when we're up, and then he's going to constantly be defending the Recruits, maybe getting 3 crowned and having no chance of making any comeback. A few dominance is asserted later. If you can keep up the Recruits' cycling, you'll be cycling through wins like crazy. And that was a delectable 3 crown. He did get knocked out, exactly as we expected, but honestly, I didn't expect to 3 crown someone around 200 in the world right now. Where are we? Oh, geez, we are literally 206 in the world, and that was one of the easiest three crowns ever. It's nice to see our name on the global leaderboard. This no skill strategy will boost your rank up. Yo, we got a game against the chosen one. He has chosen to play against us with the P.E.K.K.A. banner. It'd be really cool if he was playing P.E.K.K.A. because I would choose that matchup nine times out of 10. Guy's gonna have archers, however, so probably not the deck that I was looking for. I wonder if I can arrows them both. It doesn't look like it. You're only able to pick one and hit the tower. So he's going to have the Little Prince and he's going to have Archers. He'll probably be packing either an Electro Giant deck or a Royal Hogs. In either situation, it's extremely important that we go and cycle our Goblins out here. Mini Pekka on top of those. I think Mini Pekka one taps each. Maybe? Ah, oh, that got a hit. Wait, he just ate all the recruits. What is this man doing? If we're able to arrows on top of the Little Prince, it's going to die before he clicks the ability. And I actually like our position. Despite one of the wall breakers connecting, the mini packer should have targeted that one first. I messed up, but we're in a really good spot. Also, we can go for an elixir collector and potentially bait out a poison and then see what he's going to do afterward. Okay, I can just eat that and then go recruits and then go goblin giant and probably win because you're down so much elixir. I have an elixir collector and I have an evolution and then I also have overpowered cards. We're going to stagger more of the recruits on the left hand side. So he's not going to poison all of the recruits on the right. And then, oh, he's got Mega Knight. Wow, I wasn't even considering that as a remote possibility. Huh. You know what? That's decent because we can still go Goblin Giant and then we can go Mini Pekka on the left-hand side if we need to. Or we can go in for Little Prince. There's so many different possibilities for us. Goblin Giant's on the tower, so let's rage it up. Clean that thing up real quick. 
and then go mini P.E.K.K.A. so then the Mega Knight doesn't jump. Mega Knight's just gonna walk this way, and it's dead. We arrows, it doesn't kill, so we kind of have to go in for goblins, and then... I'm thinking I'm able to afford the ability. I believe I'm able to afford the ability. Maybe I'm gonna get trolled here, though. But yeah, as long as I can kill the rest of his stuff, we're chilling. The Little Prince doesn't die on our end. Look at the tower on the left, though. That evolved archer put in work, and look at how much damage it does to my precious Little Prince. So sad. He wanted to grow up. All right, so if we rage this at the right time, you want to rage and clip both wall breakers and hit your tower, and then you full counter with rage. That is the only way of shutting down all the wall breakers' damage. We're going to arrows here to eliminate the archers, and then as long as we're able to defend the left-hand side, we should win. So I'm going to go in for our recruits first, and I'm going to mini P.E.K.K.A. on top of his little prince, and it should one-tap little prince, and then I think we're okay. Then we can go in for our own little prince, make sure that we click the ability. Oh, we're gonna crush the wall breakers. He wasn't ready. Oh man, <laughs> feels so weird bouncing back a Mega Knight with the little prince ability, but that's what it does so well. The beautiful sight to see. He's gonna all in me again. We gotta go goblins. I have to think our way through because he's so good. And this is for like top 200 right now. If I win this game, I'm in the top 200. I want this more than anything. We should be able to make it happen. I'm going to go for recruits on defense. I can go for arrows if he goes in for wall breakers. We have solidified our spot in the top 200 in the world with this win. Let's go, Clash Royale. That's what we love to see. The chosen one, you really were chosen for this moment. It was our destiny to get it early season with this no skill strategy. And we have climbed up to 166 in the world. You'll love to see it. It feels so satisfying. We are literally reaching the top of the leaderboards because this deck is just so broken and Clash Royale doesn't know that they need to nerf it yet. And when you guys see this video and you start playing it, you'll be hitting new ranks. You'll be looking at the game in a different way. You'll be like, wow, I didn't know I was this good. And then you'll remember that, you know, boosted cards sometimes do carry you. Jump into the game against another top ladder finisher. I think this guy finished around top 200 in the world if I remember his profile. And he is immediately gonna go and galvanize me with a graveyard. I think we want to go in for a mini pack of plus rage. If the mini pack is able to lock onto the knight, that would be awesome. Oh, come on. No, don't do this. That's terrible for me. <laughs> Guys, I only have a thousand HP left. Mom, pick me up. I'm scared. I don't like graveyard freeze players, especially when they almost take everything that I own. So generally what we want to do is we want to have a lackadaisical game where we're able to cycle our recruits in the back. But this guy is not about that life. He doesn't care. He just wants to give me a lot of pain and suffering. So I'm going to go in for recruits now because I want to probably get some value here. I don't know how much I'm going to get. He's likely going to go for a bowler or something like that. Oh, he's got Executioner. That is way better for me. We might be able to go in for an Elixir Collector here if we want to. I want to kind of just chill a little bit and not chill with the freeze, but chill with our own cards, you know? Is he going to freeze that? There's no way. It's all gone, right? We can go in for goblins and we can kill the Executioner. That hit my Elixir Collector. <laughs> How did the Executioner hit my Elixir Collector? <laughs> I don't understand, man. All right, we can go Goblin Giant in the back, and then we can Recruits. I'm dropping the Goblin Giant on the left-hand side because I don't trust this guy. He could go for a Graveyard Freeze and snag that tower if he wanted, so I'm just, you know, not letting that happen. We can go for our Recruits as soon as he goes for the Bar Barrel, and then we can go in for a Little Prince afterward and whatever side we want. Kind of want to drop our Little Prince here, and then drop our Ability as well. I think he can lock onto the Executioner, so that's what I'm hoping for right now. As long as we can snag some value against the XE, then I'm happy. And that is exactly what happened. Let's go and rage up the spam and maybe pierce through the goblins. Okay, so not as much damage as we hoped for, but the Little Prince on the right? Oh, wait, the Little Prince on the right? Wait, the recruits on the left? Okay, they're doing a lot everywhere. That's kind of cool. We take that. So he's probably going to go graveyard. We stop it from crossing the river with the mini P.E.K.K.A. And then we make things happen. Let's just do the exact same strat. Go recruits. Then he can't make big plays. The more that we apply pressure with the recruits, the safer I feel, guys. Oh, all right. Well, maybe we're not going to be safe for a bit. We'll see. We should have to rage when he goes in for a freeze. Why is he not freezing? Why is homie not freezing? Okay, I'm slightly weirded out by this interaction, but I'll take it. We do end up having the ability to arrows here. And then I have another goblin giant on the other side if I want. But I don't want to. I kind of want to continuously do the same strat because the goblin giant is good against graveyard. So that's the reason that we're doing it. We're going to stop uh, everything from crossing the river. Then we're going to go in for our goblins. And then when he freezes, we should be okay here. We got rage in cycle. So I think I'm chilling. We can blast through the rest of his stuff. Go in for a little prince to the right-hand side. We got the recruits rushing through. He has to go for the evolved knight that he doesn't want to drop. That means we're just going to bombard him with everything that we own in the right-hand lane. Okay. Not necessarily the best, but it could still work if we can kill the goblins. Did the ability come down? It did! The ability might have just saved me, guys! No way! 
This is going to be monstrous damage with the Goblin Giant. The fact that the ability shredded the goblins, even though the little prince was dead, must have made my opponent die mentally. Like, that is just tragic. Unlike the ability of the Skeleton King, the Archer Queen, and pretty much every card in the game, if the ability goes off with the Little Prince, it still works. You simply click the ability, and even if your Little Prince dies, the Guardian still flies. And then your opponent dies. Even if they finish 233 in the world at over 3,183 medals, there's no Guardian against the Guardian. Hey, Fufu, what's up, dude? So he finished 157 in the world. We're around that rank right now. So uh, we can cosplay his skill level, maybe, hopefully. I don't think so. But we're going to go recruits in the back, and the guy's going to go for archers. You already know whenever we see archers, usually it means expo. But in this meta, it's shaken up and way different. Probably going to be running Royal Hogs or Electro Giant. So I want to go for an Elixir Collector in the back if we realize that he's not going to be running pigs. And I'm going to go for Elixir Collector because I don't think it's pigs anymore. Can we kill that? Is there any chance? Oh my gosh, chill, dude. I don't know if I can pull this. Well, I gotta try. <laughs> if we're able to pass the P.E.K.K.A., maybe we don't die. Oh, that's kind of good for me, actually. I think we just eat the Guardian damage, and then we defend against the rest of his stuff with Goblins, and then we go Mini P.E.K.K.A. afterward, and then we're completely okay on defense. Wait, that's hilarious. How did that work out? Oh... We're gonna lose the tower on the other side. Hmm. Yeah, there's no point in trying to defend something that's not gonna be defended. But, what if I go recruits afterward? What if I just do the recruits afterward? I can go in for a little prince here. I can recruit to the river and he doesn't have that much elixir right now. So I wonder if it's possible for him to defend this. Assuming I get the recruits charging and he's down elixir, this could be traumatic for my dude. So I'm gonna go and rage that up. I wanted one of the recruits to go and hit the Little Prince. That was an amazing Little Prince placement from our opponent. I'm going to go and click the uh, Little Prince ability. And then we should be able to kill the bandit. And let's go, Little Prince and the Guardian. Oh, that was such a smart zap. I hate that he's good at this game. I don't appreciate that. Let's go goblins and try to force that extra elixir. Archers from afar are going to tear my heart apart. Oh, man. Okay, these things, ridiculously scary. They're one of the best cards in the game. When they're evolved... They do more damage from a distance, so we have to do a lot of damage on them immediately. Can't let those things lock out of my tower. But he has two towers to protect at this point, so there is a possibility of me winning. I just don't know how high it is. I'm gonna go mini P.E.K.K.A. on the same side that he's likely gonna start spamming. I bet you he goes in for a P.E.K.K.A. So I'm gonna get ready for that. I'm also gonna go in for a little Prince, and then I'm gonna go in for our ability to go and knock things back. If he fireballs us and zaps, that could be a problem. Yeah, that's exactly what he does. So he's just gonna try to all-in me right now. Can I afford it? Can I afford the defense? I don't think I can, guys. We're trying to go arrows and then rage and then possibly go in for the little prince, but I think all my stuff dies. Dang. Fufu, you're way too talented, man. You played this extremely well. You threaded the needle and you found one opportunity to go in when I didn't have enough elixir for the evolved recruits, and because of that, I lost the game. So sometimes you'll play against people that are at this type of level where they're running a deck that you haven't played against in a while and they've mastered P.E.K.K.A. If we're playing against a top 200 player that plays P.E.K.K.A. at a professional level, they'll find openings that I didn't even know existed. If we had slightly more elixir for the evolved rare recruits on that defense against the P.E.K.K.A., it would have been an entirely different story. It's crazy how one elixir can be the difference between winning and losing games. Last season, that guy was over 3,030 medals at 687 in the world finish, and he's currently 167 in the world. So definitely one of the best players in the game, and that was a pretty fun match. Let's bounce on to the next one. Hey, Baki finished 848 in the world. Let's go. He's a part of the German elite clan. Well, I think we got the most elite no skill strategy that you've ever seen, bro. So I'm going to go for our little prince in the back. This is generally a bad decision because you have no other anti-air answers in your deck. But I'm going to bank on him not dropping a balloon because most people at this rank will not do something that foolish in single elixir. Also, we will be able to blast down the archer and then possibly make some plays happen. I think that we're protecting the little queen. I, I like calling it a little queen sometimes. <laughs> it feels like it. It's going to go invisible, but we're not going to be able to get any value from it this time. Oh, come on. Why can't you be like the Archer Queen and just keep attacking when you go invisible instead of disappearing and playing hide and seek with me, little prince? So he just used his tornado. So I think it's better for me to go in for like a mini pack of Goblin Giant, go in and devour the bowler, and then see if we can break through with a rage on top of the skeletons. So we want to time it so that the skeletons are all dead. Ugh. Could have been better. He's gonna go. Oh, no way! The mini bucket found its way around. How did that happen? 
Oh my gosh. I'm gonna be real with y'all. He got totally trolled there. That is way too funny. His little prince got obliterated. All right, so we can go click our little prince ability and try to troll him as well. We want to click it right as it's crossing the river and blast back the bar barrel and then tank. Nice. So he spent two elixir. We ended up spending six there. But our little prince is maneuvering away from the bowler like it's his job. Oh my gosh. Bowler's gone. If we arrows, is that going to give us a hit on the tower? I think that's worth. Is that more damage than the arrows? I don't think so. I think arrows does like 147 and we did not do 147 there. Maybe my math is wrong, but my editor can tell you guys. I don't think I did as much damage as arrows would have done. Feels bad. I should have just arrowed the tower. Let's go Elixir Collector in the back and see what's happening. If they go in for an E-Giant or something... Oh, it's, maybe it's an E-Giant deck because we see Lightning. Yeah, it's probably an Electro Giant deck. We can just one-tap this Little Prince with our Mini P.E.K.K.A. It's one of my favorite plays to do. It's really, really cool. If Little Prince locks on a tower, it's also not that big of a deal. So we can go Goblin Giant on the right-hand side and Mini P.E.K.K.A. Gonna lose the Guardian. That's a lot of Elixir that you just spent, bruh. Okay, we can Arrows and we can Rage. I think that that's a way better strategy because we Rage up the Goblin Giant. They weren't ready! Oh my gosh. Wait, the Goblin Giant on the right? <laughs> it's so troll. It's beautiful. <laughs> okay, so I can't cycle much here. I can go Recruits or I can go Goblin Giant. I think going Goblin Giant is just empirically better. Then we can go for our little Prince. Go in, connect, and make sure we knock everything back. And then possibly just go Mini P.E.K.K.A.? There's no way you're stopping the Shrek. You can't stop the Shrek. Shrek ready to just dominate your dreams. Also, I might just be able to arrows and like rage cycle you. So that's also a play. I'm going to make you pay. And I can't believe the mini P.E.K.K.A. damage at the start. It set us up for success for the rest of the match. And it 100% traumatized our opponent. He's going to go for a random Electro Giant at the river, but that's not going to be able to break through. And he only got lightning damage on my tower. He didn't get any units on my tower the entire match. Hopefully our opponent doesn't take a match to his phone after that one, because he got burned. Goblin Giant Spam is taking a torch to the meta and there are no prisoners. And now we're at 160 in the world. I don't make mistakes. I'm not just like the rest of you. I'm stronger, I'm smarter, I'm better. I am better! Like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more daily videos and have an amazing rest of your day. Oh,